Hello and welcome to Pastor Well. I'm Herschel York, Dean of the School of Theology at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm also the senior pastor of the Buckron Baptist Church in Frankfurt. Pastor Well is dedicated to helping servants of the Lord Jesus Christ be faithful in ministry, largely by having conversations and talking about things that matter to pastors and full-time Christian workers. Today's topic is one that I frequently find myself discussing with pastors who are facing a move, and that is following the Lord and moving your family. Now, make no mistake about it, I'm committed to pastors staying a long time at a church, if at all possible. But first of all, it's not always possible. Secondly, it's not always the will of God. God does move people around. He has different places of service. And uh, sometimes as you're following the Lord and you feel a call to go to a different place, one of the things that you have to consider is its impact on your family. And I'm, I want to encourage you, obviously, to consider that. First of all, in discerning the will of God, it's not, it's not fleshly to consider uh, things that matter to your family. It's not wrong to think about things like schools and whether or not a new place of service can pay you a living wage and uh, places to live. All of that comes into your calculation of whether or not to accept a position, whether or not to go. They aren't the main determining factors, but frankly, God doesn't just give it to us in an, an engraved invitation, please come to Macedonia and help us. He usually does it in practical ways. We, do we feel a fit? It's the right time. Uh, can we uh, make a living? All of those things come into play. One of the most incredibly important factors in a move is its impact on your family. And pastors often face this with regard to their children, asking their children to uproot and move and change friends and schools and all that. Uh, that's, that's asking a lot of them. And sometimes pastors fear that will make their children resent the Lord or ministry uh, even reject the faith. I, I'm, I want to encourage you that if you really make honoring Christ your primary goal, and that becomes the one thing you want more than anything else, more than money, pastor in a big church, making a name for yourself, you just pray, Lord, I want to glorify Jesus. And so I'm, I'm willing to do anything you want uh, me to do if if I can glorify Jesus, but I need you to give me some clarity about what that is. Well, I'm convinced God will never say no to that prayer, so make that your number one prayer. Within that, you're looking at these practical matters, but I would encourage you, don't make the effect on your children the primary thing. Understand this, if God calls you, if he really calls you, if it's really for his glory for you to go, it is as much as will for your, your wife, your children to go as well. And I'm gonna depart from my typical manner here on Pastor Well, and I'm gonna tell you a story, a personal story, because it had a profound impact on my life. I as a child, grew up in Western Kentucky primarily. My dad was a pastor of a small church. I grew up out in the country. I grew up hunting and fishing. And, you know, dad pastored a little church called the Julian Baptist Church. And Julian is in Christian County. It's nothing much more than a crossroads in a farm community. There used to be a sign up that literally said, Julian population 18. So that that's where I was saved, baptized there and loved it. I grew up hunting and fishing, working on farms, enjoyed my school, my friends. When I was 15, one August night, my dad asked me to come outside with him. Now there were no street lights at Julian and the August sky was ablaze with the stars. You could see the Milky Way very, very clearly with no light pollution whatsoever. 
And Dad and I began to talk about how beautiful it was. And in the course of the conversation, he said to me, I'm accepting the call to pastor a church in Detroit. And of course, I was stunned. I said, what? And he said, I'm feeling led of the Lord to go to Detroit. And I said, well, I can't, I can't argue with you about God's will for you, but I don't think it means that I have to go there. And I had an older sister who was married and lived in that community. And I said, let me live with her and her husband. Now, I had not asked them permission to do it, but I thought I could maybe talk them into it. I was a sophomore in high school. And I didn't want to leave the friends I'd had since first grade. And my dad looked at me and he said, Hirsch, if God wants me there, he wants you there just as much. I said, I, I can't speak about what God wants you to do, but I don't think God cares whether or not I'm there. And he said, well, I disagree with you and I'm your dad and you're going. And I knew there was no arguing with him. I knew I was going to have to go. And frankly, it was one of the hardest things. Uh, no doubt it was the hardest thing I'd ever done to that point. And we moved to Eight Mile and Van Dyke. Uh, I went to the same school Eminem went to and lived on Eight Mile. The, the movie famously named Eight Mile about his life. Uh, he would have been a little kid in my neighborhood then. I'm about... I don't know, 10, 12 years older than him. But, uh, it, you know, it was a Eight Mile and Van Dyke, urban. It was completely different from what I had ever experienced in my life. And I was determined to not like it. I was morose. I was angry. And I can remember my dad taking me to school that first day, went into the principal's office, enrolled me in classes. And he asked about my background and got a copy of my transcript. And... I can remember the principal dismissing my dad and then him walking me to my first class. There were two classes left before lunch that morning. And, you know, I went to my first class. Most seats were taken. The teacher pointed out an open desk and told me to sit there. Same thing in the second class period that I went to. But, man, then came lunch. Oh, no, there's no assigned seating in lunch. Uh, no teachers were really in the cafeteria. And this was the thing I most dreaded. You know, I'm the new kid. I talk funny. I had this Southern accent. People looked at me funny. It, it, was, it was everything that you can imagine a 15-year-old felt. And when I got my tray, I looked around the room. Most tables were taken. In the very back of the cafeteria, there was an open table. And that's where I went. I made a beeline for it, and I faced the wall with my back to the rest of the cafeteria where all the kids were. And I began to eat all to myself, just, just trying to get through lunch. When I felt a group of, of school kids, older, you know, like juniors and seniors, I could tell, standing there beside me. And one of them spoke up, and he didn't say it threatening. He just said it rather matter-of-factly. He said, you're sitting at our table. And I said, man, I, I'm sorry. Uh, look, uh, I'm new here. Today's my first day. And if you would be so kind as just to let me sit here, I won't bother you, and tomorrow I won't be here. But please don't ask me to move because I don't know where else to sit. Can I just sit here for today? And he looked at me. He said, you're from the South, aren't you? He had recognized my accent. I said, yeah, I am. He said, well, what, what state? I said, Kentucky. He said, what part of Kentucky? I said, well, Western Kentucky. And then he went near Hoptown. Now, Hoptown is inside her language. The county seat of Christian County, where I grew up, is Hopkinsville. People from there call it Hoptown. And he said Hoptown. This startled me. And I said, well, yeah, near Hoptown. I lived out in the county, but in Christian County. He said, do you know where Newstead is? This was unbelievable. I told you I lived at Julian. Julian's just a little crossroads. Three miles up from Julian, the very next crossroads is Newstead. Again, 
population 18, something like that at, at Newstead. It's no bigger than Julian. But he, this guy knew it. And I said, yeah, I know Newstead. And he said, do you know Wink Roberts? My mouth dropped open. I said, my dad pastored a little Baptist church in there at a place called Julian, and Wink Roberts was one of the three deacons in my dad's church. I've known Wink Roberts my whole life. And this kid said, that's my Uncle Wink. He said, you can sit here. You're good, man. And suddenly, I was in with the cool kids. These were the cool kids. These were the these these were the gifted kids. They they were musically inclined. They were upperclassmen. They were athletes. They they were the popular kids in school. And here I was, a kid from Kentucky, on my first day, sitting at the table with them, and they became my peer group. I had a connection with them. I'll never forget going home that day. My mom and dad were nervous, like you know, how had it been for me? And they were they were dreading the worst, like I was going to come home miserable. And I walked in the door, and my dad said, well, how was your first day? And I said, you're not going to believe this. I met Wink Roberts' nephew. And man, he just welcomed me. And I said, I felt right at home. And these kids were so nice to me. And uh, I had a great first day. And I will tell you that my experience there at Lincoln High School in Warren, Michigan, uh, was a, a great experience. I, from there, I got a full tuition scholarship to Michigan State University. God did incredible things in my life. He, he made my world much bigger than it otherwise would have been. It really was like the hardest thing uh, I could have done at that point in my life, but it was also the best thing. God used that to make me able to talk to just about anybody. You're from the South, me too. You're from the North, me too. You're from the, the country, so am I. You're from an urban culture, so am I. I. I can't tell you the doors that it opened for me. And what God taught me on that day in 1975 as a 15-year-old sophomore is that I go before you. Uh, you can trust me that when I lead you somewhere, you don't go alone. It's not only was it an encouragement to me, but it, it reminded me that God leads us as families. And if he puts you somewhere, your job is to shepherd your kids, to get them to see that we're pursuing Christ. This isn't about changing schools. This isn't a, a, about our comfort. It's about glorifying him. And you're my partner in this ministry to which God has called us. And if God really does call you, he's calling your family too. And he will teach you those lessons that he goes before you. Uh, he will use you. He will guide you. If your goal is to bring glory to Jesus, pray that. He'll never say no to that. And you can pastor well. <laughs>